testers at Fidelity are divided up into different kinds of teams. There's teams that do UI testing. Um, there's teams that do the integration layer testing. I own one of those teams. A group of people work with me on that. And then, of course, there is the unit test layer. And you know, in the traditional kind of parlance, unit testing, cheapest place to find your bugs, leftmost place, et cetera. Then you move on to integration, then to UI. And I would say that something like five years ago, all of the testing was being done at the UI layer, all of it. Most expensive place, most brittle piece of software around, I am old enough that if I still had a black and white screen, I'd be okay with that. Okay? <laughs> um, but so I, I actually don't have lots of interest in doing UI testing. I'm really focused on that integration layer. And, and we've developed a platform that are used by many consuming applications. And um, all of the testing, when I started working with this team, was what I call emotional testing. Somebody came around and said, I want you to test this test case. I feel really strongly that this is important to me, right? That, that this is what the whole thing is about. So a long time ago, in a um, paradigm far away, I worked at Bell Labs, and something that I learned there was that the thing that you invent something new for is rarely what it becomes important for, right? It's always like the second generation of something that's invented or a new use of something you're invented that really causes something to take off. And um, I was talking to somebody earlier about transistors. I think the story of how the transistor is invented is, is classic about this. So, you know, there was NPN and PNP and what really took off, et cetera. But that's true in all of our software products as well. So I'll get business people coming and talking to me about a new feature they want to add. And you know, how are we gonna test that? And I look at it and I say, yes, but it's fitting into something that already exists and it's gonna open up lots of new doors. And they'll say, oh, don't test that. I don't care about that. Nobody's gonna use it that way, right? <laughs> and so what I was looking for was truly some kind of combinatorial pairwise test tool where I could at least show what we did test and transparently communicate to my business partners as well as to the development teams who that's sort of what te separates the development testers from the QA type testers is, you know, happy path. The, if people only want to test down the happy path, I usually ask them to go work for a development team. And um, when, when we have those kind of discussions with people, I want to be transparent about what we're testing. You know, I, I want to be very clear. There's a whole set of tests that we're not testing. The other thing that I noticed was because in the past the UI testers were doing all of the testing, at that point, um, you know, because it was so expensive, how do we reduce that kind of cost? I think the answer was separate out the integration test, but they didn't. They just started adding testing at the integration layer. And so eventually, we had this, uh, a particular case came up that I thought was wonderful. It was my test case of using the Hexawai software. So there was a test plan that was in, in place already. There were 100 test cases that were being manually executed. And I started writing out this spreadsheet of what the different parameter values were, et cetera. That 100 test cases was 0.001% of the functionality that was available, looking at all the parameter values, et cetera. It didn't take very long to create. It was one person for about a week. It did take 20 hours to execute, you know, because, partly because it was manual. But uh, I said, that's horrendous. I'm appalled, horrified, la, la, la. And the exhaustive scenario that we looked at turned out to be over 10 million test cases, which somebody earlier was talking about, 254 man years. I don't even know how many man years that is, but it was <laughs> clearly a number that was too big for me to work with. But. Almost more importantly, and this is before we had Hexawise, I could see that the tests, that 100 tests, were all clustered around a particular set of variables. And some, some variations of parameters were never tested at all. It, it was just appalling to me. There was something in my science background that said, this is just horrendous. And um, so we were looking at using pairwise tools. Honestly, I, I think the open source tools are great out there for teaching classes and whatnot, but they don't scale. They didn't scale for me. You know, As soon as we started testing anything big with them, they did all kinds of horrendous things. And through a sideways kind of a connection, I ran into Hexawise, and we tried it on this problem. 
and found that we could get the four-way test, so groups of four parameters all tested together uh, with 100% coverage at that point with 1,800 tests that ran in 22 minutes. And that, uh, that was fantastic. I needed to do that. I needed to be able to go back to my business and say, here's what I'm testing now with 100% certainty. And when one guy stood up and said, you're not testing my case, which was 11 parameters that had a particular set of value, <laughs> I went back and just added it in because I could, right? I can still make them happy with relatively little heartburn on my part, and, and I can still have a very broad set of coverage. And when people accidentally discover the new things that the software will do for them that they've never intended, I've at least got some tests over in that area, right? And I just love that. So um, it is not all happy path even working with HeckleWise. About every two to three weeks, I call Matt and say, you know, I've got this problem. How are you going to solve it? And frankly, they've been really great about resolving some. One of my big things is on this, the thought about a data dictionary. So um, if we have a common terminology, I work in finance, and um, investment instruments are a pretty common term. But some people call them one thing and some people call them something else. And there's different values that they test with all the time. But they're really supposed to be the same thing. I want one data dictionary for all these things. And we're able to start building that and discovering it because now I've got a common vocabulary, which is the test plan that we get out of Hexawise. I can talk to the UI testers. I can talk to the business people. We all understand exactly what we're looking at in terms of the test plan. And we've started to extract some of the common test cases. In the UI testing of this particular area, we had, uh, I wanna say, it was more than 20,000, less than 30,000 test cases that were in place. 95% of them were redundant, either with the integration layer below them or with themselves, because people would come on board for six months and then they quit and go somewhere else and somebody else would come along and reinvent exactly the same test. But I could see that now. When we went in with Hexawise and redid the test plan, we could see how many tests it actually took. And, and it was just so small compared to what we had been testing that the first time I ran it, um, you know, I, I ran the full suite of tests and I went back you know, an hour later or something like that and told the dev manager, we're done, you can move ahead, you're all right now. And um, by move ahead, I meant promote to a new environment. And he said, what? You know, I thought I'd see you again in two weeks, but it was the same day that we were able to go back. And uh, that's the kind of difference it's making. We do run into problems every single day, one sort or another. Often it's a matter of maybe us misusing the tool and we get some hints about how to use it a little better. We've had problems with, do you pass in columns of values or rows of values? And it turns out that that can be important in different cases. Those kind of hints are very helpful to have um, somebody, you know, maybe that you're paying sometimes. Maybe it's sometimes good to pay you, right? Um, we, we to have them so. come along. I actually yeah. think so too, because yeah. you have to survive, otherwise yeah. we'll have trouble. But the other thing I want to say is, you mentioned yeah. Justin, yep, yeah, okay. Yeah. He mentioned the intern that we had come along. Our core competency here should not be around how to use a tool. And the problems that I had with some of the open source tools that did the same thing was they took a heck of a lot of effort just to use them. And this tool was a lot simpler. So I like that about it too. Just some things I like, okay, the end.